Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing today? What's going on, guys? It's been a while. It's going on cold signals. Uh, been a while. Hmm. As you guys Good can see. Good morning, ladies Ooh. and gentlemen. How's oh, almost had a bad. See that? You see how the camera angle just changed there? Interesting. Don't know why, but it did. But anyways, you guys get the point. <clears throat> so yeah, it's been a while since I've been on here. It's been a uh, couple crazy past weeks in Colorado, got stuck in Colorado, had to switch my flight in Colorado, three of my friends got sick in Colorado. It's been a wild time these past couple weeks. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Yes, yes, we do. So anyways, busy couple weeks. Sorry for not being on. Uh, the living situation on vacation wasn't great. I was in the living room and people were up all night and then people are up in the morning. So streaming and being on just wasn't going to work well, unfortunately, so sorry about that, uh, but we're back now, so that's all good. All right, we're going to get into it here. The uh, couple stocks that I like for today are, uh, ooh, I messed the spelling up on that one, is BPTH. That is incorrect. It says BTH. It's actually BPTH, but we'll start here with BPTH because this is probably one of the stocks that most people are going to be inter interested in this morning. Uh, why are they going to be inter uh, interested in BPTH this morning? Well, because it's the one penny stock that's skyrocketing that looks like it's going to make everybody a billion dollars today. That's why. Uh, what we're seeing right now on BPTH is we're actually seeing an upward wedge pattern. So BPTH most likely is going to break down here very soon. Um, yeah, almost guaranteed it's, it's probably going to break down here shortly. So if you're actually long BPTH right now, you should probably be a little careful. It should be coming down soon. Uh, but BBTH is up big. It has positive news. So if you go read the news, whether it's on Google, Thinkorswim, if it's equity feeds, whatever service or something you use, uh, BBTH is going to have news this morning of some phase two study, positive news, the stock is spiking. Now, if you're not familiar, BPTH recently ran a couple days ago, uh, really, really pushed strong, okay? So what we know for sure is that when BPTH had its good run a couple days ago, people started shorting the stock, uh, anticipating it to drop out. <clears throat> Today they got some good news and now the stock is squeezing up. So a lot of what's going on right now is a mixture of people buying from the good news. So first you have buying from the good news. Secondly, you just have short sellers getting squeezed up that have been short the stock from a couple days ago. Like that's what's, you know, that mixture of the good news, the buying, and then the short squeeze is what's making this move look the way it is, a straight shot up, so aggressive. Um, so there might be some more opportunity for BPTH today. What I want to come out and mention is this right here, obviously this is all resistance. This is all sellers. This is all resistance. So BPTH has already ran up really big on the day and it ran its face straight into all the resistance. So more likely than not, I mean, typically this would come down, right? It doesn't mean it has to, but you're up into a sell area. So it's already extremely risky trading BPTH where it's at because of the large move it's made already. So I want to trade it. I personally do. The way I have it, the only way I see myself trading BPTH today personally is if it does in fact drop out, it then pulls back, you know, consolidates, holds a true support intraday, shows me that it wants to move higher, and then I will plan on trading it. I just don't want to come in and try and chase this thing out of the gates because that's usually a, a great way to just screw up. <laughs> so I want to not do that. So I'll be watching this uh, pretty closely. Uh, but yeah, it's going into a bunch of resistance. It's got a lot of strength. So on the flip side, if this does keep going, think about how big of a move it could have because everybody who was short the stock is now going to get squeezed out, right? And then this is already creating a lot of FOMO. So you're going to have a lot of fear of missing out traders trying to hop in on this and blow it up even more. So we'll watch BPTH. Personally, I'd like to see this thing pull back, you know, down towards $6, down towards 630, hold true support, show a bullish pennant, show some type of bullish um, activity, and then I'd like to trade it. But as of right now, it's, it's a no-go for me. Right now, BPTH is not a buy. It's just a neutral. You're watching it, right? That's all this is. The only, this is just a neutral. I just want to watch it now. Okay. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Moral story. Don't go. Yeah, more of the story, don't go to Colorado. You know what's going to happen? You're going to end up sleeping 
in a in a gross pull-out bed and it hurts your back. You're gonna snowboard for three days. You're gonna have a couple hangovers that feel like they're never gonna end. Then you're gonna get stuck on a mountain in an avalanche storm seven hours down the mountain. Then you're gonna miss your flight. Then you're gonna have to get a shuttle over to a new hotel, stay in that hotel, wake up at four in the morning, come home, back to college. Just don't go to Colorado. It's just not not a good time. Not good. Uh, want a stock take? Watch ACB weed stock. All right, Rob Napai, Nappy, we will watch ACB. Morning from New York City. What do you think about Shop? Shopify, um, you know, I always, uh, I actually, it's funny you say that. I kind of, I don't want to get too off topic. I guess talking stocks isn't off topic. We're going to get into the watch list. We'll continue here, but I actually want to say this uh, from the gentleman who uh, said, Am I thinking about Shopify? So this is an interesting thought I had with Shopify, which is S-H-O-P. Back, we'll just call it maybe a year ago, I really wasn't crazy about Shopify. Like I, I traded it, I would trade it, right? Because it's a volatile stock. Um, but I always was like, why is this thing growing? Why is the stock price and why is the company growing at such a fast rate? Like I understood why, but then when I look at Shopify and I, I think about it in general, I'm like, wow, this just really isn't anything special. It's just a website that helps you build more websites. So to me, it was like, really, is the business model that good? And then just the other day, you know, I kept seeing Shopify kind of popping up and I'm like, maybe this is that stock that is supposed to be, you know, like a $200 stock, or like a $180 stock, because everything really is becoming online based, um, e-commerce stores, websites, shopping, it's all really done online. And Shopify's main business is building online websites for people to sell merchandise and whatever else. So I was like, well, maybe I've been going about that all wrong and Shopify is actually um, a good stock that we should be looking at or thinking uh, you know, into the long-term future that we will see as a, a winner. So just a thought, something to think about. So if you guys are you know, thinking about stocks or you know, Shopify, um, you know, maybe look into them a little more and try and gauge where you believe the online e-commerce business um, will be in the next three, four, five years. And if you can see um, tremendous growth within that industry and you think that it's going to continue to um, excel, uh, then Shopify might be something uh, that, that's worth watching. Just a, just a thought, okay? That was extremely cold coffee. Mm -mm, not good, not good. All right, um, we're going to get into the next one here. Uh, so you guys are kind of pretty clear on BPTH. Just know that BPTH, where it's at, is a complete sell zone. A lot of sellers. Uh, the move started here. It's a big move. Right now, it's high risk. You're going to want it to pull back. You're going to want to let it settle and don't get FOMO. Okay, on to the next one. ROST, this is going to be more of an expensive stock. Uh, relatively, you know, it's all relative, I guess, expense and cheap. So this is a, a $92 stock, ROST. Uh, now I haven't traded the stock in a long time. It's been a, it's been a while. Typically, the, the only time I ever trade ROST is going to be on an earnings day, uh, specifically because on an earnings day, we will tend to see more volatility on stocks. Like if you go and look at the stock on a typical day, like look at it on a typical day, like, ugh. I want to puke in my mouth looking at this. This is gross. Okay, it moves. I mean, it moves, but it's still gross. Okay, it's like it's like eggnog or something. Like, ugh, that's disgusting. Okay, so you don't want to mess with ROST on a typical day, but on an earnings day, it might be good. It might pick up in that volatility and start providing good range. So that's why I'm watching it. It hasn't really shown its cards yet. It's just one small pop down and then consolidation. So it's kind of interesting the way it looks. Um, but nonetheless, um, it's kind of trading in a range. Okay, let's look at this. Let me delete these off. Um, so it, obviously, it's a no-brainer that your support pre-market is right at about 91, right? You have your first kind of bounce, hold, 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 hold. So 91 is kind of that area where people are looking at. Look at the camera angle changed again. I don't know why it does it on the GoPro. I gotta, I gotta play around with it more. Uh, but you can see it's holding 91 here pre-market, so you can obviously say that is your pre-market support. All right, now if we look back at a daily chart here, see what's going on. Actually, we should do the 180-day chart. So we drop down to that level, which bounces off this level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so here's another thing, right? You see this, see this down drop, then if you see this little pop right there, go straight across, and you're gonna see that this lower lower wick on ROST's earnings is matching up right to that wick. So right in this area is 
you know, theoretically is a support. So enough of the blabbering and this and that. I'll be watching ROST. Um, I'm not sure if I'll trade it, but if it starts to prove itself, I, I really want to short it. I like the way that it dropped, came back up, rejected 96, sold off again. So I think there's a move on this today, probably to the downside. So that's the way I'm going to play it. Um, you know, I'll follow it down moving averages, but there's really no specific price point that I'm looking at for this one. As long as it just kind of rolls over on the day, that's probably what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and then the one more stock. And before we get to this one, I'm going to kind of answer some questions here, go over some questions. Um, yeah, so NASDAQ SE, kind of like what NASDAQ SE said there about Shopify. Shopify could be the next, you know, next to Amazon. You know, and yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe that's saying a lot, you know, call it the next Amazon. But I get where he's coming from. I mean, I think that Shopify could have potential growth in the future. And it is a stock that um, I will now pay uh, closer attention to. Not because of the stream, but because I was thinking about it like two days ago. And then somebody said in the stream, so I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe that is the way to go. Uh <laughs> oh, that's good. Connor, have you ever considered another profession on and on behalf of Wallace? Please don't stand up is the only option. Uh, I, I think you're going with stand up comedy. I'm not sure, brother. Um, let's see. I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can do that. Hmm. Yeah, Hazel. So yeah, we're gonna. I'll be watching Costco for earnings tomorrow for sure, without a doubt. Eggnog is disgusting. No, it's you should go with coffee and Bailey's. Yeah, stay away from GoPro. Not good. Not good. Um. Um. Yeah, Kiera. I I am aware of QTT. They just had their earnings, and I think they were pulling back this morning. It it might be something to to take note on. I kind of watched it a couple times like seen it a couple times uh yesterday or yesterday it popped up on my scanner excuse me i seen it a couple times yesterday because it kept pushing on the day uh, but yeah they are gapping down but i wouldn't necessarily call it a higher low right because you, you can't really call that a higher low because i well at least i think you're referring to this gap down and then you're looking on a different time frame and calling this gap down a higher low and you can't really call it a higher low yet because the stock just gapped down. It hasn't really gone back up. It's still on the down drop, which means it could lead towards another down drop, which thus would create or would, would mean this is not a higher low. So with something like QTT, actually, this to me kind of looks like it's good for a short play. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a higher low yet, um, personally. So... Yeah, I would actually probably watch that to the downside today. You know, what's the <laughs> what's the best way to pull emotions out of a trade? You know, as long as I've been trading, I've been battling the same thing over and over. Um, and it's like, yeah, I face those same problems all the time. I mean, I still do. Um, I mean, I've gotten better at it. We always get, you always get better at it. Day in and day out, you get better at trading without, you know, thinking... Yeah, I mean, yeah, losing money is always going to tick you off and, you know, getting a great win is always going to make you feel excited. So, I mean, can you honestly tell me that when you take a trade and you win a really good trade um, that you don't feel excited? Most everyone does. So everybody feels emotion because excitement is happiness and it's a feeling of an emotion, right? Losing some money, getting a little ticked off, a little piss, that's a feeling of emotion. If you lose money and you win money, everybody feels that emotion. So... You know, I would say if a trader says to you that I feel zero emotion while trading, I'm an absolute robot. I mean, I guess it's possible that there is someone out there that is just an absolute robot. I don't deny it. I will say that I'm not one of those people that's an absolute robot. Um, I have had my moments where I've, I have felt like a robot. And when you do, you trade really well. Um, and then, of course, I still have my days where, you know, I trade like an emotional um I'm not going to say what I was just going to say because that's probably not something to say for public. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes I'm emotional. Um, but, you know, and that's the thing. You just get better at it. Um, like I said, some days I'll be trading like a robot where I just I don't even really think of losing. 
or winning money. I'm just trading. I'm just seeing trades and I'm like, okay, like that's a good trade. Bing. All right, take it off. Bing, bing, bing. It's just like bouncing around. Like some days I could actually bounce. Some days I've bounced around from like 10, 15 different stocks on a day and like almost won every trade. Just bing, ding, 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 ding. And you know, and those are the days where you just know you're on, right? And then you're going to have your days where it just doesn't happen. You get a big loss and then that big loss will usually lead you into wanting to win money back. And then like that is that, it's just that quick flip, right? You don't even realize it happens and it happens, right? You go from like realizing you're doing well and you're not being an idiot. And then just one little quick and you don't even realize the switch in emotion. And then you're just trading like an idiot and it happens and you just gotta, you gotta be able to recognize it and do your best to shut it out. Cause if you don't, most oftentimes it will obviously result to a revenge trade kind of day, um, which then usually results in more losses. Um, in that it, it's just being able to take that good voice in your head and punch the bad voice in the face and go, no, 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 no. Because if you can, then you just come back the next day. And that's the thing, guys. Like, have you ever noticed like when you're trading and you're trading bad one day and then it takes a loss and you're taking a loss and you're losing, right? And then you lose some money and you're just not having a good day and you want to keep trading. Did you notice that the next day when you come, you come to the market the next day, you really aren't even thinking about any of the trades you made the previous day. Meaning you've basically already, well, at least for me, you've already forgotten about the previous day. You're on to the new day, right? And you're just thinking about how we're gonna succeed today. And it's just kind of a day-by-day -day process in the market and thinking about the future and not the past. And if you catch yourself thinking about the trades you made yesterday and how you lost yesterday, then you're already setting yourself up for losses today. And so you gotta be able to just shut it off as best you can. And it is true, if you can get to a level of trading like a robot where you just don't even really think about winning or losing money, you're just making trades based on what you know you should be doing and what's correct in terms of stock trading, um, it works phenomenal. Uh, but it is, it's just, it's just not natural. It's not natural, right? It's not human, it's just not in the human you know, genome. It's just not the way we're wired, right? Humans are wired for flight or fight kind of situations, right? you are wired to either protect or just run, right? You're either protecting yourself one way and everything about trading is the exact opposite of how humans are built. Um, everything about trading is risk and a lot of it is just, it's an emotional game. It's back up and down and that's why it's so hard to get good at it. That's why the markets move up and down so erratically uh, because there wouldn't be a market if we didn't have emotion. So <laughs> as funny as it is, and as, as much as you wanna lock out emotion, emotion is what we actually need to drive the market we have. So it's kind of like an evil, evil necessity that exists. Without emotion, we don't have the volatile markets right now. Um, but with too much emotion in your, tr your, your individual trading, then you can obviously screw yourself up pretty badly, right? So in your individual trading, you want to obviously be almost emotionless or have good control over it. But when it comes to the market, you want the market to be as emotional as possible and as sporadic as possible in terms of, in terms of day trading or looking for volatility. Volatility equals big range, big moves. Big moves means opportunity. Opportunity means cash in your pocket. With no volatility, no movement, that means opportunity is smaller. Your window is smaller to make money and put it in your pocket. So we need the emotion to drive the markets up and down, up and down to create opportunity, opportunity, and then that's your window to make your money. Without that volatility, we don't get opportunity. None of us get a paycheck. That's how it works. So, you know, it's catch 22. Individually, you want as least amount of emotion. Market as a whole, you want everyone to be as emotional as possible, okay? Um, all right, now we're gonna jump into uh, next stock here, which is going to be ANF, and my screen is like totally glitching out right now, hardcore. All right, so we're gonna be looking at ANF here. All right, this is the next stock that we have in our watch list, and then I will kind of look at some comments here, all right? So this is just an earnings one. I'll try and make this pretty quick. It's 8.53, I gotta get back here. But um, so ANF, it's gapping up this morning. It's an earnings report. We'll take a trend line here, give you guys a little mini lesson. Look at boom, boom, trends going up. You kind of had like a flat top right uh, here, right? Kind of like a flat top, flat top. Now the stock is breaking out of that upward flat top wedge push on its earnings. If you look at a daily chart, there's probably a gap fill. Yeah, there is a, wait, hold on, where are we at? We are at 24. 
So right now the price of ANF is at 24, and if it can pop up and over 24.57, we might have another additional pop, uh, push up to 26. Um, so right now ANF is squeezing up. It's got a potential gap fill move uh, at 24.62, 24.50s up to 26 possible doesn't mean it's going to happen for sure uh, so we're kind of just watching it to see if maybe we get some larger pushes on the day to do that gap fill all right uh, looking at the intraday chart just kind of stair stepping up uh, for me I, I won't trade this unless i get some movement and more of a setup i don't really like the way it looks there's no pattern here it's just an uptrend off of probably a a fib bounce here just just a push retracement move up so it's probably going to consolidate for a little bit here i would assume uh, before I want to trade it. Uh, one second, guys. I'm just looking at. Uh, uh, I was in. Uh, I was in uh, Steamboat, Colorado, which, by the way, was beautiful. Yes, I missed being here. Uh, the market, the spy. I mean, I don't have too much to say on the market. The market is, uh, you know, it's still at a seller's point, right? Think about it, market was low, it was a buy, now it's high, now it's a sell. Just supply and demand. So I think the market's gonna, I think we're gonna see kind of a slow drag down on the market personally. Uh, my take on NBEV is NBEV right now is testing its long-term trend line from the big move. So once, remember like when NBEV went big um, not too long ago and then obviously shot up and did all its cool stuff. Well, right now NBEV is probably around like 540, 550, testing its downward trend or uh, upward, excuse me, it's testing its upward trend line support right now. Uh, the daily candles have put in a few lower wicks, which is you know, implying there are some buyers down there. So I think that NBEV is trying to base a little bit for another move back up to hopefully go towards a bullish breakout. So I think NBEV is actually close to bouncing. I was considering picking some shares up to swing trade, but I wanted to give it another couple days. Uh, see what it does, see if it sets up better. Um, can you look at LXRX? Is this a swing trade? LXRX. Uh, LXRX, this is a very low volume trading stock. It's $7. It's on a clear downtrend right now. I would not probably buy this stock until it puts in a higher low off of this big green move. And then if you do trade it, you're going to want to take, um, uh, you're going to want to most likely swing trade it as it doesn't have a very big average true range, which means, and not a big average true range, and not a lot of volume, or it's an extremely high float. But before I confuse you, all I'm saying is this is probably not the best stock to day trade. It's probably the better stock to have more of a swing trading outlook position when trading this. And right now it's on a downtrend. You need a higher low. And that's where I'm at with that one. Mm, let's see. Uh, earning season is usually like a solid two and a half, three months. And then like a new one starts and then a new one. The DLTR, I remember they were supposed to have earnings, but I can't remember the day. Was it today? Oh, dude, I almost missed it. Thank you. I don't know how I would have missed that. I always check the earnings calendar. I don't know. Today's been a weird day, I guess. Um, DLTR, uh, I don't have too much time to go over this, but I would watch DLTR today. Um, DLTR, oh, there's Dollar Tree and then there's Dollar General. Mm. Usually, I will say this, that I've, I've traded both Dollar Tree and uh, DG, Dollar General, on earnings, and I can't remember which one's better. Honestly, because I remember, I remember a couple times, uh, like Dollar Tree or Dollar Journal had these really good earnings days um, and traded very well. And then, like, then I paid attention to them another time. And then one of them started trading like a like a turd and wasn't good, and the other one stayed good. So I can't remember if it's Dollar Tree or Dollar General, but I still follow both of them on the earnings days because they do tend to have good trading days. It's just the past couple earnings I remember either Dollar Tree or DG wasn't trading all that great and so I avoided it on the past couple earnings. So I'd say probably the last two earnings 
it was either Dollar Tree or Dollar General wasn't that fun to trade. And it was like previous to those two, they're really good to trade. So I, I can't remember personally, but um, I would still watch this. I'm going to watch this now, actually. So, all right, guys, uh, that's all I got for you today. Again, always thanks for tuning in. Please, if you can, give us a thumbs up before you head out of the door. Um, it really does help the channel grow. Other than that, guys, take care. Have a good day. Uh, stay green. Um, by the way, I did not do a recap video yesterday of my trades. I really just didn't have much time yesterday. I had a meeting with my accountant, but, um, we started the day off terrible with like a $3,400 loss on a AWSM. Um, I had a good trade initially, but no, guess the battery died in the GoPro, but nonetheless, we started with like a $3,400 loss on AWSM. Um, then like another loss, so it was down like probably four grand at almost, no, it was a total of 3,600 when I stopped trading in the middle of the day, had my meeting with my accountant, came back, ended up finishing my day down $200, 250 with commission. Um, so I bounced back trading CIFS later in the day, but nonetheless, wasn't the best trading day, but we did lose some money yesterday. Uh, but anyways, there's a story. All right, gotta go guys. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Take care.